When I think of a good climbing destination, um, the factors that really play into it for me are the um, the quality of the the quality and concentration of the climbs, um, a variety of difficulty levels. Um, it's great if there's a variety of climbing options like bouldering, sport climbing. Well, um, <laughs> we came here and I wanted to do Ju, which I had done a couple years before, but I was a little nervous about uh, the beta, but mostly about uh, how to do the bottom because I remember having a lot, having a lot of trouble on the bottom last time and that there was a, a couple of big moves and long pulls and that used to be something that really challenged me and I remember struggling with it for hours and hours last year or two years ago and then uh, I remember getting to the top out the first time and having someone just feed me running beta and topping it out no problem so yesterday I was pretty encouraged when I could do the bottom part no problem pretty quickly and ended up having a lot of difficulty on the top out. I have a lot of trouble with uh, the mental aspect of bouldering. I don't uh, believe in myself a lot about dynamic moves and uh, slapping over the tops and that kind of things. I think a lot of it was my mind um, getting in the way of just doing the climbing as demonstrated by staring at the hold instead of slapping for it. <laughs> Sum this up for me, cause I haven't got the time to finish what I started. Yeah, can't you see that this game has become so mundane? Have I built up enough momentum? Little Cottonwood is notorious for being a hard climbing area and there's not a lot of problems below a certain grade and I think Twisted is one of those that people get on and work and once they do it, it kind of feels like they're on to the next level of climbing in Little Cottonwood. It looks deceivingly easy and then you get up in there and you have to do these pretty funky moves. It used to actually be harder than it is now, this hold broke up kind of high on it and made a better hold where there really wasn't a hold before. I think it shuts a lot of people down because it's so beta intensive. It's one of the only accessible problems on that boulder, and that's really one of the main boulders at one of the main areas in Little Cottonwood with, with a lot of famous problems on it. So 
When I was first approached about doing this video, I was pretty pretty motivated. Um, and we sat down and talked a little bit more about it, and the you know the theme, the fact that it was going to be all females, you know, doing these top 20 problems, and I thought that that was really cool. We had kind of decided to come out here. Um, this was in September, and uh, shoot this. And I'm not quite sure why that that fell through. So typical to the East Coast, <laughs> um, it fell through because it was raining every single day. As you can see, it's raining right now. Basically, we kind of just decided that we would put it on hold. Um, the winter's here. This whole area gets pretty snowed in. Um, so we kind of decided to put the whole thing on hold, and we would just uh, do it in the spring. So Matt and I were on our way to go away for three weeks down to Boone to go climbing and um, I got a phone call from my doctor and she told me that she wanted me to get a CAT scan, that they had found um, a fairly, well I guess it wasn't fairly large, but a tumor about seven centimeters um, in, my abdom or in my lower abdominal area and um, that we need to get that situated. I was definitely kind of told to stay away you know, from any type of physical activity, climbing, you know, any of that kind of stuff for, for six weeks for sure. We talked about, um, you know, possibly having somebody else do it or, you know, you know, me not doing it. We just kind of just decided, you know, we'd give it about three months and see, you know, how I was in that three month um, period of time. Um, you know, it's been about three, three months or so since the surgery. Um, and I definitely, you know, have, have gotten some of my strength back. My core is definitely the last to come back. It's a lot harder to work on. You know, we came out here today. I gave it a whole lot of effort and a whole lot of tries. And, you know, it definitely had some trouble.
It's a little hard. You know, when you've done something before and it's felt almost effortless at the time that you did it, to come back and to try it and to feel the struggle and feel it being really, really hard, it's definitely a hard connection to make. I feel strong again, but it's just kind of not all there. Like all the pieces of puzzles aren't there. All the elements are working here, except for my core. You know, my heels in that perfect spot that I needed in. You know, I'm, I'm moving out to that hole and I, you know, I'm, I'm making that move. But the minute I start to rely on that core, it gives a little and it's just, you know, I didn't want to give up the fight. I didn't want to say, oh, okay, well, I can't do this problem right now. I didn't want to let that barrier down and say, you know, I, I, can't, I can't do this right now. Um, so I definitely struggled with that for a little bit. But after a while, you know, I was, I was, I'm all right with it. I'm all right with, you know, being able to, you know, have Matt kind of give me a little boost and, and, and work, you know, work those moves out so we can get the movement on film. Because what makes this problem one of the, the top problems is the movement. You know, it was a little disheartening. I definitely wanted to come out here, be strong and, and crush the problem and just tear it tear it to pieces, but you know, we all have to I don't know how to say that. I don't know. You know, we all have to sometimes just, you know, sit back and say, you know, I I I tried the best I could and I put forth as much as I could and, you know, that was the best I could do and I might be sad about it, but, you know, Buddha ain't going anywhere and I'm only going to get stronger. So many people here, why am I still lonely? So When I'm getting ready to try a highball, I think first impression, I usually get up and look at it and I'm pretty intimidated. Sometimes I'll even walk away and uh, be like, wow, this looks crazy, you know, and then come back a week later with just like a different idea or maybe I got used to the area and realized that, wow, this maybe is something that's doable. And then you start the process where you're like, okay, how can we do this and how can we do it safe? To me, I guess a highball is something where there's some serious business um, pretty high up, so if you fall during a serious business, you're risking injury. I think the appeal for me is in, it's kind of where I started, and it's a way for me to challenge myself in a somewhat safe environment. When you're on a highball, it isn't so much about the grade or whatever, it's about a mental thing. It's overcoming that idea that you're up there and you're up there for 
That's how you get to the top, basically. You know, I, th I just think it depends on the person. So that you can't say a high ball is a boulder problem that's 20 feet or taller or 50 feet or taller. I mean, I think everybody would agree that a 50 foot boulder problem is a high ball, but maybe not if the, all the difficulty was in the first eight feet and then you had to climb 42 feet of five, six. It's all about your perception of what is high and maybe it's not even high, maybe it's just dangerous or the landing seems dangerous, so you just assume that you know, I'm gonna get hurt somehow doing this. Actually, I'm pretty terrified of highball boulder problems. Um, I'm pretty impressed with, with some of the climbers, especially the female climbers that have stepped up and done some of the crazy highball stuff that's uh, been out there. The best highball climbers are really in tune with their ability and their, their feeling at that moment, because when you reach that committing point, you have to know whether it's the right time to go for it or not, and that's kind of one of the differences between someone that climbs a highball problem smart and someone that gets through a highball problem. Whether it's a highball or not, if it's a good line and it's a nice, beautiful, clean line and you, you really want to send it, whether it's you know 30 feet tall or 10 feet tall, I think you, you, you do it. The other thing really is, is just the pure aesthetics of it. The taller lines, for maybe I just have a warped perspective, but the taller lines seem to be more beautiful. They just stand out a little bit more. The appeal of bouldering has several aspects. Um, I think it's very social and it brings people together and um, that's it much more so than roped climbing where it's just you and a partner. Bouldering is definitely a lot more social than I think any other type of climbing. Um, you definitely tend to go out bouldering with a group of people and you feed off of each other's energy. In my opinion, bouldering is a little bit more of a gymnastic version of the sport. You're not using a rope, a harness, or anything like that. You're just, you know, climbing a piece of rock, a, a big boulder, a, you know, that's kind of sitting there. Whether, you know, you're going 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet off the ground, it's just kind of you and the rock and you and the moves. I think the simplicity of bouldering is something that really appeals to a lot of people, too. There's not a lot of equipment required, and the ability to sort of have control of your own situation as opposed to rope climbing where you really need to trust your 
Chick-fil-A or you can go out and boulder on your own um, and just keep it as intense or as undangerous as you um, want it to be. Is undangerous a word? Probably not. <laughs>
I haven't been on a road trip before and I haven't been bouldering, like traveling and bouldering before. So coming here, buying this big fat van and <laughs> coming to new areas, starting up in Waco. And then I was just, I don't know, I was super excited to see if my motivation would like stay really high. And then I just keep on coming to all these new places. And it's just so beautiful, so many nice lines. And I don't know, I'm not bored <laughs> at all. A great climbing destination. You know, it's funny because every time we go to different places around the States and uh, go to different climbing areas, that becomes my favorite climbing destination. Um, but honestly, to make a real, a real good climbing destination, I think it needs to have the climbing and the rest day activities. A great climbing destination for me personally is one that obviously has good quality rock. Good camping is really important. Free camping is really important. If there's water nearby to swim in too, that's always a bonus. Squamish, for example, beautiful, beautiful place. I mean, not only is the climbing phenomenal, but just the scenery. The scenery is so visually pleasurable. You know, you can't, you can't beat an environment like this with a great little town, everything's here. Great camping, very inexpensive to be here for an extended period. Great place to be in the summer. Breeze blows through the forest, stays nice and cool in here. Friction is usually good. The bouldering is beautiful. You're in this gorgeous forest. It's a great forest, nice, a bit humid sometimes, but still great. Green, pretty green. Nice boulder too. Maybe it's the best I have seen in Canada, maybe. Uh, this is trip number probably four to Squamish to hide in the boulders. There's not enough holds in my taste. There's too many slopers, not enough little crimps. You need little crystals, things you can hang on to. The bouldering is very powerful and core oriented. The rock is awesome. It hurts my fingers a little bit. It's a different style of climbing. It's not, you can't just rely on your big muscles to get you up there. You gotta use your entire body, you gotta use your technique and everything, and I think that's what makes Squamish so great, is that it forces people to use everything. Um, Baba Haridas is one of the boulder problems that I probably spent the most time on in Squamish actually. And it's really, it's a striking line when you walk up to it, you think, oh yeah, that's, that's really obvious. The funny thing about it is that the slab to the right is like V negative two. It's like, hike, you could hike right up the slab. So it's not, it, it's, it is contrived, but it's, awesome boulder problem. I think it's beautiful. I just, this is the first time I've been on it this year and I didn't really know what I was doing and I just kind of was trying to figure it out and I was having problems slapping up after you reach out far out and you just to slap up I couldn't stick the slap. And I didn't really have the heel the right way and I didn't really know what to do. <laughs> the body tension and stuff was all off so now I was like oh I don't know what to do. <laughs> It's desperate. I think it was desperate for me <laughs> slapping on these little slopey features and um, sort of just uh, groveling your way up this ret, but it is actually a really fun boulder problem. Thank <laughs> you.
the first time I knew I was like, oh, I can do this was this morning. Um, I was just, I almost made it to the top and my foot just blew off and I was like, oh, I can do this. It was like, I had the good hold and I just needed to focus. And so finally it was like, yes, I can do this. I think anyone that comes up and see this is just, it's just such a beautiful line and it's different than anything I've done before. And, but it, once you keep trying, it grows on you and you just got to keep trying and it's really cool and you just, I think people just need to focus. It's all about little precise things. It's not, it's not all power. It's not all like big arms. It's all about the heel. It's all about just, it's mostly in your mind if you can do it or not. You just gotta feel it right and you just can't give up because if you give up then <laughs> you should get to that. When I finally sent it, I was relaxed and finally just focused. It was all in my mind, like my body had almost like pretty much given up and I just pushed through and I finally did it <laughs> and it was really exciting. <laughs> yeah, the atmosphere in Spalak is always really mellow. Life just kind of slows down a bit. Yeah. yeah. No pressure to do anything, no deadlines. Just it's an escape. Just get to go and do it. Getting back on the Ironman today was a really good feeling because I was fresh, I was really psyched. I had like worked through my sequences, I was looking at it and I had my beta, you know, and like stay really low, you know, like really relax. And then you go for this really good, no, it's not so good. Wait, uh, <laughs> I just gotta catch it like this. I get up a heel and I cross and I go again, get the heel closer. And where am I? <laughs> I am here. Day one when I went to Ironman, I had some problems, definitely. I'd already been in the happiest bull ring that day, so I was pretty tired. And then it was just, you know, there's thousands of ways of doing Ironman. You can, I ended up doing different things all the time, and I got super pumped, and I was like, ah, I gotta come back fresh. It's true. It's good holds, you know, not, not really any hard moves, it's just pumpy. It's true. You end up at some crimps, you got, you got good feet, you got your heel hook, you know, you're all good. And then there's this throw, this nice little ending of your trip, you know. It's beautiful, it's good holds, good landing, it's it just gives you a good feeling when you're climbing it, you know? That's a classic for me where you're just like, you're fucking enjoying it.
first time I came here, I thought to the buttermilk because I thought it was like Joshua Tree. The rock's pretty grainy. The only difference is that there's a lot more patina here at the buttermilk than there is at Joshua Tree. There's a lot more cramps and jugs and stuff. Everything's not just slabs. There's overhangs and stuff like that. But um, it does kind of shred the tips a lot. It's still kind of you know grainy. It bites, it bites your skin. My definition of a classic is something that has good moves, that moves that flow, good holds, not too sharp, not, you know, not crumbly, of course. Um, for me, I like it to be a, a little bit of a tall problem, um, just because I think tall problems are, you have to have more commitment to do them. And to me, it makes a problem more classic if it's tall and it takes a little bit more effort. And, and if it's a little bit hard too, then even better. You gotta try. <laughs> I think the thing that makes a problem a classic is that you can climb it a thousand billion times and never get sick of it. Every move is fun. Um, and I think maybe problems that have been established for a certain period of time, I don't know what that would be, but you, know, you don't really think of new problems as classics, I guess. A classic boulder problem, the quest, the quest is always on for finding the true perfect problem and a lot of times I think that that's just an ideal that is not necessarily out there. There's a time in life everything is clear I think something that's classic is something that everyone can get on um, and enjoy it and do it. Um, probably stuff for me, the ones I find are classic are the ones that um, are a feature that you see automatically and want to climb it. I think um, a classic problem is something that you can get on and you don't really have to think about it, it just flows. You're on it and before you know it you're topping it out thinking, damn that was a good problem. Definitely has a lot to do with the aesthetics of the line, like walking up to a wall that's maybe you know, vertical with kind of thin, thin moves, maybe a little balancy, maybe kind of punchy with a little power to it. They're the true lines of a boulder, and that's the classic line. Pure, clean line. Sometimes 
Waco is probably the most fun place to boulder ever because you can turn anywhere. There's a boulder problem. You don't have to walk all over the place. Everywhere you look, there's a boulder problem. Uh, and they're all good. The bouldering of Waco Tanks is the best bouldering that I have seen in the States so far. By far the best bouldering. It's got a great concentration of intermediate to super hard boulder problems. Uh, the lines are really clean and well defined. The boulder problems that form there are unlike pretty much anything else anywhere you go to, uh, especially throughout the States. Um, in North America, you find these steep overhanging roofs there that amazingly have like perfect in-cut edges that you can climb on. If you come and you're climbing on V0, you'll have thousands, well not thousands, but hundreds of boulder problems to climb on. If you're climbing on V12, you'll have tons of boulder problems to climb on. You can't find a concentration of climbs anywhere else in the world where you've got such high quality and such pure movement um, in a tiny area. Waco, everything's good. Everything you get on. No matter what you're climbing, there's something for everybody at Waco. And it's all really fun. Um, to me, I guess to climb when you, it, it's hard to explain because when you start climbing every day is an awesome climbing day and it's this utter mental and physical and emotional high and then like anything, I mean it's this unity of mind, body, emotion, spirit, um, a sort of wholeness and being in the moment. But then as you climb longer and longer, um, those magical days where you're, you're, everything comes together, or you might have a week where you just peak and everything comes together and it's just, you're unstoppable. I, mean, I think that's what probably keeps a lot of us climbing who've been climbing for you know, more than a decade or whatever, is that you know, the improvements aren't as noticeable and it's not as dramatic, but then every once in a while you'll just have a, a day or a week and everything comes together and you're unstoppable and a bunch of projects go down and you just feel this incredible sense of, um, of being a powerful being and being able to manifest that power and, and control every aspect of your being, you know, so things that have been defeating you mentally or emotionally um, that you maybe you have been physically capable of all along, it all comes together and it just sort of leaves you feeling on top of the world and not really in an arrogant or egotistical way, just in a very empowered and um, in tune with your environment way. Um, just suddenly being able to make use of holds that formerly seemed ridiculously small and realizing that you've mastered the technique of using them. To me that's what it's, that's what keeps me climbing. What I love about climbing is, I think, foremost, the lifestyle. Um, beyond climbing being a sport, just kind of the way of life. Um, and besides that, I think I like just challenging myself. Everything from um, you know, getting stronger, or mentally stronger to just hanging out with friends. Hey friends. It's the perfect combination of um, kind of that spiritual, emotional, and physical, um, you know, just kind of that, that coming together of those three elements. I think everybody needs to find something in their life that fulfills that and for me that's certainly climbing.
I don't really worry about, you know, maybe the normal things that you can get hung up on in ordinary life, like little things you can maybe get stressed out on. And when you climb, it puts you really in the present moment. I'm never bored when I'm climbing. It's always very stimulating. Even if it's doing stuff that other people have done, it's always like multifaceted. There's so much going on. It kind of doesn't even give you time to worry about all the nonsense that may be troubling you in your life. It's hard to explain to people the love that I have for climbing. They kind of think, well, get climbing 10 feet up a boulder and then walking down the other side, what's the, where's the gratification in that? But any climber would understand. It's just one of those things you have to experience, I guess. You know, I don't really know what it is about climbing that makes it so special and, and makes me want to do it all the time. It's the first time that I ever really went climbing, um, I just fell in love with it. It was like, whoa, this is, this is what I want to do. This is something that I really, really enjoy doing. It kind of is, it's, and it's funny that it's tough too, because it's like, how the fuck can you spend so much of your life de dedicated to this thing and you have no idea why you're doing it? Like, it's like, why do we do anything? Like, why do I, why do I go to school or why do I get a job or I don't know? You know, like, I mean, my initial response is there is no meaning. And like, that's kind of like, what I believe, you know, like you create meaning anywhere, no matter what you're doing, you're creating the meaning while you're doing it. But I think climbing has been more than that for me too, because um, I never like, before I started climbing, I never really dedicated myself to anything. Like I was like decent at like a lot of things, you know, like just sort of like, I guess like I dabbled in a lot of things and whatever, really enjoyed doing them and, it, and that was fine. And 
climbing was the first thing I ever actually dedicated myself to in any like in any way where I was investing myself like beyond the short term and um, for me climbing has become this like it's every time you pull off the ground it's a test it's like you're testing yourself and you're seeing it's it's an emotional test and it's a physical test and it's like an intellectual test and it literally happens every time I pull off the ground and um, every every time it's an opportunity to see like what I'm capable of. First time I tried Midnight Lightning, I had been climbing for like two or three years, and like I think the hardest thing I'd ever done was like maybe four or something, I, like Iron Man Traverse or something. And um, I came down here and I just got, I tried it, but I got shut down. Like couldn't even begin to do the jump move. Was like barely sticking the second the bump. Um, but I was psyched and I was like making progress on it so I kept trying it. It's like right here in the middle of the camp, like it's like you can see it from your tent. I was like falling asleep at night like looking at it pretty much like I could more or less see the lightning bolt from my tent. And um, I don't know, I mean it, there's there's like a whole history to this valley and that this is sort of like the essence of, of this campground in a way. I mean, there, there's always a crowd of people around it. There's always somebody trying it. And I don't know, it's, I've climbed on better problems. It's not that it's like the best problem ever but that it symbolically it means a lot more. It's, it's like kind of that climbing was sort of, I guess, born here in a way. Um, and so I guess bouldering kind of was too. It's like phenomenally beautiful here. It's like kind of overwhelming, but I've been like so focused on this problem that I haven't really felt as though I was like here and experiencing Yosemite. And it's kind of a bummer because it is really phenomenal. And if I had had more time, I probably would have appreciated Yosemite itself a bit more.